Delightful. And so the first speaker in this, this second section here is Dr. Massimo Livrero. Uh, he's, uh, I like to refer to him as my favorite wild and crazy Italian man. And in any case, he is a long-standing uh, viral hepatologist of great renown uh, who is currently working at the University of Lyon. Thank you, John, for the, for the introduction. And <laughs> yes, this is my presentation. So uh, my task today is to talk about the use of novel biomarkers to assist combination trials. And I based all the preparation of the, of the talk uh, on the assumption that before me, Nora Terro would explain everything about combination, uh, combination therapies, so uh, combination trials. And uh, that is a little bit a pity because I really uh, thought that I had not to say something, but uh, we will see. So uh, what are the endpoints in, in combination trial? <laughs> I started with that, but I suppose it, I suppose it to have a lot of introduction. Uh, so uh, the endpoint will be mainly functional cure. Uh, with the sustained biological suppression and uh, eventually, as an endpoint, a change in biomarker as a proof of concept, decrease on one log of a quantitative SBS or, or reaching less than 100 units because there is, we know that there is a correlation between these two situations and eventually the loss of SBS. Uh, but biologically speaking, what that means? In the case of functional cure, it means that you silence the CCC DNA in the liver. You may accept to have low levels of inactive CCC DNA. Reactivation would be still possible. And uh, eventually, if uh, uh, the same drug is given for more time or the same combination, you can go on and get the CCC DNA clearance, so a complete cure. Obviously, the only way to eliminate everything from the liver, even the integrated, uh, uh, the integrated um, uh, HBV sequences uh, will be uh, achieved only when you clear the infected cells. You kill them and you have not anymore the spread of the infection to new, uh, newly infected hepatocytes. I just want to reinstate a concept that the CCC DNA uh, signaling is very similar conceptually. Uh, uh, CCC DNA um, silencing is very uh, similar conceptually to the idea of the, the epigenetic uh, um, con uh, the immune control of the, of, the, of the infection. Very likely cytokines that are produced by the microenvironment, by the immune cells, the innate immunity, the, the, the adaptive immunity, will have at least in part, uh, in addition to the elimination of, of, uh, uh, of infected cells, may have also a, a kind of uh, effect on the, 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 the CCC DNA transcription and uh, uh, boost the possibility of a functional cure. So what are the biomarkers that we can, uh, we, we can uh, use? And again, I thought that some of these things were already uh, touched before. So uh, essentially, we have four biomarkers, but I will concentrate mostly on the new one that are the circulating HBV RNAs and the correlated antigen, which are the, 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 the therapies that I will try to touch in uh, with respect to the use of these biomarkers, obviously the direct antivirals, direct acting antivirals, the NUCs that uh, are not new, but I will uh, say something, the entry inhibitors, I will not really talk about that, the camp, uh, capsid assembly modulators, uh, all the strategies to uh, silence or destroy RNAs, the HBS re release inhibitors. I will say a few words on, on interferon, even if Maura already touched this, because I think it's relevant, and I will touch the immunomodulatory therapies very briefly at the end, because we have no, uh, in, in reality, we have very little data on the biomarkers in this setting. And the combinations. The combination, uh, I, I, I only wrote this because I thought that I would have an introduction, but it's obvious that NUC are still part, of, will be part of the, of the combination for a long time. So we have to think about having the NUC in the, in the, in the, in, in the field. And a nuke with a direct antiviral, whatever, a nuke with a direct antiviral and another direct antiviral that targets the HBS antigens. This will be probably something going on. Actually, there are already a few, few trials in this direction. Uh, the nuke with an immunomodulator, without entering in which kind of immunomodulation for, for now, or an uh, a nuke, an immunomodulator, and a direct antiviral that targets the, the, the antigen because there is this wide concept in the, in, the, in the field that if we lower the HBS anti, uh, antigen, we will revive the immune responses. We have several discussions along this day, the last days about that. Uh, 
what is the gold standard to assess the situation in delivery? It is the measurement of CCCDNA amount and the CCCDNA transcriptional activity. It's very important to remember that CCCDNA quantification is not enough because there is a, the possibility of a dissociation between CCCDNA levels and CCCDNA transcriptional activity, and this is very, very relevant. Obviously, the use of biopsy uh, is, uh, the, the, the use of these biomarkers is hampered by the need of a biopsy. And still, I want to reinstate that, that for HBV complete cure, we have to go for the measurement of CCCDNA. For HBV functional cure, uh, we have to go for CCCDNA inactivation, and so we have to measure also the, uh, the 3.5 uh, RNA species and uh, the ratio between uh, RNA and CCCDNA. Uh, do we have something new? Uh, yes, uh, we let, uh, got a lot of uh, discussion in these days, in these uh, three days of the meeting about uh, the FNA, mainly from the immunologist because they is, they is their preferred way to get uh, cells from uh, from the infected livers to do immunological studies nowadays. But uh, um, Barbara Testoni in Fabian's lab, in a collaboration with with the uh, Patrick Kennedy group uh, has shown that uh, it is possible to use FNAs to uh, quantify uh, in, a, in a very good way uh, CCCDNA and uh, um, uh, 3.5 RNAs with consistent results between matched biopsies and FNA samples. This will open the possibility that uh, we can really use material from patients to go and test the uh, intrahepatic situation. And we have established uh, standard operating procedures for, for the two uh, branch immunology, immunological assessment and viral assessment in FNAs in, in Lyon. Uh, what we need from a, from a good biomarker, to be non-invasive, but that, that is obvious, that to, should be helpful to identify treatment response before the endpoint, this is also logical, should be capable to identify the target engagement with the new treatments, should be informative about the depletion of uh, CCCDNA or its inactivation, and should, uh, uh, in a way, uh, be able to reflect the intrahepatic CCCDNA pool size and its activity, uh, being capable to predict functional cure, HBS loss, and to predict complete cure, elimination of CCCDNA. It's a lot of requirement. I, I'm not sure that, that we are already there. And more importantly, depending on the mode of action of the new molecular entities we, have, we will be using in the combination uh, trial, the biomarker will reflect preferentially target engagement or CCCDNA targeting. And this is something that we have to remember when we design studies and we, when we evaluate the biomarker. However, detecting a target engagement is not a bad thing. I mean, it will not inform us on, on how, how near we are to functional cure or complete cure, but still might be predictive. But we will know, we don't know now, we will know after the studies will be done. Will be done. So this is something that I cannot elaborate more because we have no data in this direction. Are the old um, biomarkers useful? Um, DNA is not useful because we use NUC uh, all the time, so, uh, not useful in combination therapies most of the, uh, in most of the situations. E-antigen uh, reflects HBV replication and CCCDNA transcription, but uh, E-antigen can disappear, and many patients have no uh, E-antigen by themselves because they are in a different phase of the disease, so it's not sufficient and not useful. HBS is not uh, specific. It can originate both from the CCCDNA and from integrated HBV DNA uh, sequences, so it's not specific for CCCDNA. Uh, in a way, its loss reflects both the loss of CCCDNA and the inactivation of the CCCDNA, but the, the kinetics of uh, quantitative HBS decline with many of the new drugs is, uh, is too slow to be informative. There is no change or uh, very slow um, kinetics, so up to now we have no, nothing really interesting. The correlated antigen, uh, I will not uh, go through all the data, but uh, is a composite marker um, that measures different things. Uh, um, we know that it's uh, correlated with the CCCDNA intrahepatic transcriptional uh, activity, and uh, the Barbara Testoni, um, and all together we, we show it that is uh, useful to, um, to discriminate active and inactive uh, HBE patients, can, can uh, detect a subpopulation of uh, e negative patients that have higher transcriptional activity of the CCCDNA, more fibrosis, more, uh, more necroinflammation, the, and a, a group of patients that could not be identified just by serum HBV DNA and HBS. 
can predict the sustained response after nuke cessation. Uh, there is a very nice new paper coming out a few months ago. Uh, in, in the setting of Japanese studies, is predicting of HCC uh, development, but uh, this has to be further confirmed. Uh, the major limitation is that it's not, useful in, it's not so useful in positive patients because there is a lot of antigen uh, there uh, that falls the, the meaning of, of, of the biomarker. There is a limited correlation between the correlated antigen HBV DNA in nuke uh, treated patients. And most of the um, patients that are negative may still have CCC DNA. Do we need a better sensitivity? Uh, yes, everybody says that, a uh, more sensitive assay. And there is a paper just published in which they uh, have changed a little bit the, 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 the assay and they have gained one log of sensitivity. And this means, seems to be interesting, uh, both to better cl uh, classify some, uh, some patients uh, and uh, uh, some treated patients in particular, uh, nuke treated patients, and uh, to predict uh, HBV. Uh, reactivation. Uh, the last uh, biomarker, circulating RNAs. Uh, here, the situation is, is uh, requires some specifications. PGRNA is transcri transcribed only from the CCC DNA, so it's potentially a very good biomarker of CCC DNA activity. It's well correlated in, uh, with interpreting CCC DNA activity in, ma in mouse model. Um, Maura showed that. Uh, Maura's group and uh, um, several uh, papers have, have showed something similar. In particular, we have showed in the, in, in, in the same group of patients in which we studied the correlated antigen that there is a very good correlation between uh, uh, HBV, um, circulating HBV RNAs and intrahepatic CCC DNA activity. And here are the data that uh, are not yet published, or have been presented at the last uh, ILC meeting. Uh, there are differences for the biomarkers in the different chronic hepatitis B phases. In untreated patients, HBV, sorry, RNA and HBV DNA levels are, um, are correlated with the RNAs always one to two log lower than the DNA, and we confirmed that with our assay. That is a, uh, an assay that has a chemistry uh, slightly different from the previously published um, uh, assays. Uh, in nuke treated patients, this correlation is lost, and uh, um, the RNA uh, levels are higher than DNA in early phase, but decline later on um, uh, as well. Limitations. The pgRNA is not the only circulating HBV RNA species, so the things become, may be more complicated. And in this meeting, we uh, got some uh, nice presentation from, uh, from our groups in, in, uh, in Lyon regarding uh, the, the presence of uh, um, uh, circulating HBV RNA in endo, uh, exosomes and uh, different species uh, present. Uh, they are not the major species. The major species is very likely still pgRNA, but we have not studied enough patients to be sure of what is the situation. Uh, more importantly, uh, both uh, CCC DNA and integrated sequences may contribute to uh, a, a serum HBV RNA species that are not the pgRNA. So if there are not pgRNA species, so they can come from the integrated as well. Uh, finally, there are multiple assays, different technology, different RNA species targeted, so uh, we also need a unique standard beyond the DNA standards or the armored RNA standards that have been used in, in the assay uh, so far. So according to the different uh, assay, in, re in reality, the biological significance of the assay can be different. What about the drugs? In the case of NUCs, in the beginning, since you block the conversion of uh, uh, pgRNA in the, cap, in the, uh, in the uh, immature capsid into DNA, uh, you end up with more uh, secretion, at least in in vitro, a system of uh, uh, HBV RNAs. But in patients, when uh, you are late in, in the treatment, uh, at the end, since replication goes down, also these biomarkers go down. And here are the best data available. is a paper published by Ivana Carey uh, with the Abbott um, essay, in which it's clear that more along to you treat and more the patients uh, start to lose uh, correlated antigen and uh, the RNA, both of them. What is the situation with the CAMS? With the CAMS, uh, you uh, actually have a very good response in terms of uh, circulating RNA. Many of them have been tested, and uh, you have essentially a target engagement. 
you target the capsid, the RNA that uh, are uh, generated in the capsid after being transcribed are, are destroyed. The reduction of the, uh, the CCC DNA pool over time uh, may reflect the, also the reduction of the CCC uh, pool over time. And the, the direct effect on, uh, of the CAM on the CCC DNA activity is not fully uh, established. So it's mainly target engagement and the, an indirect effect of the blocking the recycling, if the recycling is, uh, is efficient and so on. Here I show uh, the results quite, quite clear. I don't know how to, to point to the, yes, here. Uh, quite clear in terms of, uh, um, of RNA with uh, one of these, uh, um, of these uh, um, uh, comes uh, the J and J molecule that has been published uh, uh, last year, and here is another is another cam, very similar situation. Uh, is, uh, I just mentioned it because they um, played with the composite DNA RNA uh, RNA uh, endpoints. I think that is a little bit. Uh, um, far-reaching because uh, if it is a target engagement, we have to be more careful when we design endpoints uh, and so on, because the information we get is, is uh, flowed in a way. SIRNA, I go very fast. SIRNA, you target the RNAs, you don't find the RNAs. This is, is a quite, uh, no Martini, no party, uh, quite direct. I will not go, it's target engagement in the pure, uh, uh, in the more pure uh, uh, flavor. Uh, obviously, uh, we have an effect on the CCC DNA possibly, but not established, not measured um, up to now. And uh, on the activity, because you destroy all the proteins, if coro X protein, X protein, we know is important for CCC DNA activity, you have an effect, but nobody measured it. And uh, here is just uh, uh, what you get uh, with, uh, with the J and J siRNA, the pres data presented at the last uh, ESOL, and uh, the ESOL in 2020. And here is another, is another example with, uh, f uh, with, uh, with uh, the ROAD uh, 5220, published in GATT a few months ago, uh, in which uh, here you see that the effect is not so linear in all the patients. So, even if there is target engagement, uh, there is something going on. Uh, what is that? Uh, as it merits to be better characterized, even in monotherapy. Inhibitors of uh, HBS release, uh, in theory, uh, you should have block of export of most of the RNAs. Uh, we don't know because uh, the data on the correlated antigen and on the RNA have been generated and published, published um, in the, in the co-infection, and uh, we have no real, uh, real important uh, uh, data uh, published, at least, uh, that we can fully evaluate on the mono-infected uh, mono patients. And the protocol has the interferon kicking in. So I have a problem there in the interpretation. Why? Uh, because interferon, uh, for those who believe it, and I am one of, the, of those who believe it because we generated the data, uh, there is, uh, in addition to other effects, in addition to uh, the direct effect on the capsid and HBV replication, uh, the possible effect on CCC DNA uh, stabilization, destabilization never proved in patients, uh, the possible contribution to immunomodulation, but uh, there is, might be also some negative immunological effects uh, in, uh, in uh, going there. Um, in addition to be very variable from patient to patient, so we, we listened to a nice uh, presentation during the meeting, uh, it, it has the power to directly target uh, CCC DNA transcription. So if you have no transcription, no RNA, no uh, circulating RNA, uh, like you have much less HBS in some patients, you have, uh, is the only drug that has a clear cut effect in a subset of patients on, on HBS, on HBS. Immunomodulatory therapies like receptors, checkpoint inhibitors, therapeutic vaccine, they all have the potential to directly target the CCC DNA transcription through cytokines and different signals, converting uh, this into an epigenetic control of, of the CCC DNA, and so have the potential uh, to uh, induce functional cure, and in this sense, uh, the RNA should be not a, a target engagement, but uh, a sign of target engagement, but rather a sign of CCC DNA targeting. There is also some targeting of the CCC DNA um, for degradation uh, through the same mechanism, and uh, the efficiencies need to be confirmed in, 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 in patients, and obviously in this sense will be a, a, a biomarker of a complete cure. 
And then there is the elimination of infected hepatocytes. But if we do all this job to, uh, to immune, uh, restore the patients, uh, we do that because we think that we will kill the infected cells. And in that case, uh, you will have a biomarker, um, will be the biomarker, uh, if it goes down, will be a biomarker of a complete sterilizing cure. So RNAs and correlated antigen in the setting of immunomodulatory therapies are very likely the setting the most useful in terms of evaluating the CCC DNA pool and, and its activity. And in the combination, we don't know, and I, I will not go because there, is, there are no data. Depending on the combination, we will have a mix of target engagement at the CCC DNA targeting at work. The, the relative uh, role, uh, impossible to predict. I, I'm sorry the, for the people that gave me the title, but uh, I cannot answer because of the lack of data. We, we can only do educated guess, but since all of that I showed with you, there, there will be a problem. So in conclusion, direct evaluation of intrahepatic CCC DNA and uh, 3.5 RNA uh, species is, is still the gold standard with all the technical limitations that we know. Correlated antigen circulating HBV RNA are good surrogate markers of CCC DNA activity, and their combined use must be better studied because uh, they do not identify the same, uh, the same patients uh, in, in a way. Uh, correlated antigen improved sensitivity must be uh, largely tested in treated patients. Uh, circulating RNA assay need to be standardized and need the standard to have a, a common uh, quantification uh, uh, across all the tests. Biomarkers discriminating the presence of the activity of CCC DNA uh, uh, and uh, from integrants are still needed. So we do not have anything that allows us to, to know uh, what is coming from the, from the CCC DNA and what is coming from, from, uh, from uh, the integrations. Depending on the mm, mode of action of the new drugs, the biomarker will reflect target engagement or CCC DNA targeting. Detecting target engagement may still be very useful to predict functional cure or complete cure, but we have not the data. In the setting of combination therapy with multiple modes of action, the new biomarkers but must be, should be benchmarked with intrahepatic evaluation of CCC DNA pool size and activity. If we do, will not have enough biopsy to make the, the correlation, we will have endpoints based on biomarkers that we will not, not know what they mean in the setting uh, of that specific combination therapy. And we can only make educated guesses on their behavior and significance at this stage because we really don't have the data or have the, the, the comparison with the liver for any of the combination at this stage. My preferred combinations. And here I just put Janus uh, Bifronte, the, the, the Latin uh, uh, divinity, because uh, I would like to say that I don't want immunotherapeutics uh, in, the, in the mix. I'd like to say that a nuke with a very potent cam uh, will make the job because uh, the CCC DNA, if you treat long enough, uh, you, you get rid of it. Um, eventually with a little bit of entry inhibitor to be sure that you have not, uh, you are faster in eliminating new infected cells uh, the, the, uh, to, to take control of the infection of new cells. I still think that uh, NUC and CAM uh, plus an immunomodulation might be a very nice combination. Uh, in terms of concept, uh, but only if we, if we look at the uh, functional cure. The very big point is, uh, do we want functional cure? Three seconds. <laughs> functional cure or, uh, or complete cure? It's a completely different uh, thing. If we want complete or, or uh, cure, or even a functional cure, but we aim for, for complete cure, the NUC, yes and no. And then uh, I am really sad, but I have to concur that you need an immunomodulation that re-educates the liver and microenvironment, plus a, a serious vaccine that can awake or create new uh, responses against the, against the virus. Whether the nuke, whether the nuke has to be avoided to 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 what other approaches that limit the antigen have to be avoided, I, I have my doubts. And. Uh, for the data that come from our group, I thank the people in my lab and the people, uh, Barbara and uh, Testoni Fabian lab and all the RSU team there. The RSU is our project on circulating uh, RNA. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Uh, excellent talk, uh, Massimo. Thank you very much.